In this video, let us look into the arrangement of raw data in serial order. Let the marks obtained by 30 students of class 9 in a class test out of 50 marks according to their roll numbers be 39, 25, 5, 33, 19, 21, 12, 41, 12, 21, 19, 1, 10, 8, 12, 17, 19, 17, 17, 41, 40, 12, 41, 33, 19, 21, 33, 5, 1, and 21. Now the data in this form are called as the raw data or the ungrouped data. The above raw data can be arranged in serial order as shown below. Now, suppose we wish to judge the standard of achievement of the students. The data in this form do not give us a clear picture of the group. If we arrange them in ascending or descending order, it gives us a slightly better picture. In ascending order, the data looks like you just have to take out the ones or the smallest number and then like put them in the order of their increasing value. So it looks something like 1, 1, 5, 5, 8, 10, 12, 12 and so on. And in descending order, the data looks the opposite. The largest first and the smallest last. That is the 41, 41, 41. You can see three values of 41, 41 and 41. So the descending order will have 41, 41, 41, then 39, then 33, 33, 33. So this is how it goes. So the raw data when put in ascending or descending order of magnitude is called an array or an array data. We've done this already. Now, if the number of observations is large, then arranging data in ascending or descending or serial order is a tedious job and it does not tell us much except perhaps the minimum and maximum of data. We will know that the minimum is 1 mark and the maximum is 41 marks or the maximum is 41 marks and the minimum is one marks. So to make it easily understandable and clear, we can tabulate data in the form of another table which I'll be showing you in a new sheet. In the first vertical of the table, we write all the marks from lowest to highest. We now look at the first value in the given raw data and put a bar that is a vertical line in the second column opposite to it. Now we see the second value in this in the given raw data and put a bar opposite to it in the second column. This process is repeated till all observations in the given raw data are exhausted. That is, you have the same data more number of times, maximum being four times. So say for example, till we've counted in everything, we need to do this thing called as tally marks. Now, the bars drawn in the second column are known as tally marks and to facilitate, we record tally marks in bunches of five. That is, the fifth mark is drawn diagonally across the first four. Say for example, if I have four marks and then I have another one, then I draw the fifth one across the tally mark of four. So this indicates five. Now, for example, this indicates five. Now we finally count the number of tally marks corresponding to each observation that is one has two tally marks so that means this is two students the number of students is two say for example 12 has four tally marks that means the number of students who's got 12 marks is four so this is how this kind of a table works this is definitely much better than the last one that we did which was called as the serial order table so this one what do you call this one this one is called as the frequency distribution. How frequently is one mark being scored? How frequently is five mark being scored? How frequently is 21 marks being scored? Say for example, what is the frequency of 40 marks? It's just one. What is the frequency of 41 marks? It's three. So this is how this helps very quickly. You don't have to waste time counting and all those things. So this is called as the frequency distribution. Marks are called as the variates because it changes and the number of students who have secured a particular number of marks is called the frequency of the variate. The frequency of variate 1 is 2, the frequency of variate 5 is 2, and so on. So the number of times an observation occurs in the given data, it is called the frequency of the observation. How many number of times does the mark 12 appear or occur? 
four times. So four is the frequency of 12 marks. Now the presentation of data can further be condensed into class groups. Now let us in the next sheet also learn about condensing the presentation of data into class groups. So here we have another type of presentation of data which is class group. This data is more condensed. In this presentation all the observations are divided into groups. These groups are called as classes or class intervals. We can arrange the previous data into the following classes. For example, marks 1 to 10. How many students have secured marks between 1 and 10? That is 6 students. Now, how many students have secured the marks between 11 and 20? That is 11 students. How many students have secured the marks between 21 and 30? That is 5 students. And how many students have secured the marks between 31 and 40? That is 4. And what about 41 and 50? And that is 4. So this is also the number of students is also called as a frequency. The class 1 to 10 means the marks obtained between 1 and 10 including both 1 and 10. The number of observations falling in a particular class is called the frequency of that class. For example, the frequency of the class 21 to 30 is 5. So this is called as the class interval presentation of data. Thus, the class 1 to 10 has a frequency of 6, 11 to 20 has a frequency of 11, and so on. So this type of presentation of data is called as grouped frequency distribution, whereas the last type of the presentation of data was simply called as frequency distribution. This ends this video which contains a set of three different types of presentation of statistical data.